My name is Kenneth Owens, and my story starts off in Ada, Oklahoma, during the Dust Bowl days. Some of my first memories are fishing for catfish with willow poles and pulling crawdads out of the ponds. My dad would pick up any kind of work that he could find during this time. But around the time I turned eight or nine years old, the dust storm started getting bad. I remember the howling wind, not being able to see more than two feet in front of you. Pretty soon, it seemed like everyone in my town was on the move. They started going every which direction to find work. We left our hometown when I was about nine years old and started hitchhiking with whatever we could carry on our backs. We either hitchhiked or rode the rail cars all the way from Kansas to California as my family chased work. Our journey ended in Fresno. We stayed under the bridge on North and Cedar Avenue and ate hobo stew with all the other families who had just arrived. My mom passed away when I was 15 and I moved to Long Beach to work the docks at Terminal Island. I would see the PT boats come in and I thought, man, would I like to drive one of those. When I turned 16, I got a hold of my birth certificate and changed the 1927 to 1926 and my dad signed off on it. All of a sudden, I had jumped from 16 to 17 years old, and I was able to enlist in the Navy and train in San Diego. I went aboard the USS Pierce and went to Oceanside, California to have maneuvers to learn how to operate the landing craft, vehicle, personnel, boats. I became a coxswain, the operator of the LCVP boats. I was in the third division on the USS Pierce, an amphibious squadron. It was common for the captain to send non-coms to the coxswain to get their questions answered pertaining to combat. Our intentions were to encourage them to be brave, strong, and proud to represent America. This one young man carrying a guitar approached me one day and asked, what is combat like? As we discussed my experiences, we took a liking to one another. He showed me pictures of his family and invited me to his hometown to meet them. He talked about his mom's home cooking, the wonderful fishing, and the beauty of Kentucky countryside. All of that sounded really inviting since I was only 16 and pretty much on my own. As we loaded our boats with troops that morning, I looked over in the corner of my boat and there he was with his guitar. We acknowledged one another and I said, hey, strike up a tune for us, which he gladly did. This got everyone's spirits up as we entered combat. We landed and all of the fellas piled out of my boat and stormed the beach. I completed dropping the first wave and started to scan the beach for wounded to transport back to our hospital boat. As I scanned the beach, I spotted my young Kentucky friend. He had fallen in battle. This was hard to take as he lay there with his guitar by his side. Right then and there, I made a vow never to allow myself to get personally acquainted with another non-com. War was hard enough to handle on its own. Even to this day, I think about that young man and wonder how his family is. I was in 10 major battles during the war and it took me 40 or 45 years before I could even talk about my experiences. I still think about all those guys who were laying in there on dying on the beach, calling out for their moms or dads or sweethearts. I think those guys were the real heroes, the ones who didn't come back home. We were kids when we went in, but the ones who were lucky enough to come back home came back as men. The fellas I served with are practically all gone now. I was one of the youngest at the time, and now I'm one of the oldest. Something war has taught me, it is a life, it is a precious thing. You can't go north, south, east, and west. You've got to stay together. We need to come together as one. That's what life is all about.